I am Leah Lewis Henderson, and I'm an artist, I'm a teacher, I'm an arts administrator, a cultural worker, I'm a community builder. Did I say that I'm a mom too? <laughs> and a wife. And before I was any of those things, I was a little girl. Yay. There we go. So before I was any of those things, I was this little girl, the little brown girl who knew herself as Leah Alenta Lewis. And indeed, family has been the foundation of much of my life path. For many of us, I know that we may connect with family and find it to be a source of inspiration for a lot of our work and our experiences in life. And so I have to give credit to these people in this picture. So these are my parents on their wedding day. Um, my mother's the lady in the white dress, and that's my dad. So Mr. and Mrs. Leroy and Nanny Lewis. And to the right is my maternal, excuse me, my paternal grandmother and her husband, who I call Big Mama and Big Daddy. <laughs> Maybe you have one. And then to the left, sitting, is my maternal grandmother, Ma, and her husband, Papa J.C. So to tell you about my people is to tell me about, is to tell you about myself. Uh, my parents are from Ruston, Louisiana. Ruston in the house. Any Ruston connections? Okay. So they're from Ruston and really from a small town called Clay, which is like even more country than Ruston. And um, my childhood was spent visiting my grandparents, you know, going down to the farm. Uh, at the time when I was coming of age with all of my cousins, you know, it was a farm. But for my grandparents during their youth, they were sharecroppers. And so they were very much connected to the land as workers, as laborers, and had that experience, like many people, of toiling the land and not seeing a lot of economic benefit from it. But what I gained in my childhood were enduring lessons that really have carried me throughout my life. So, I leave Shreveport as a girl. I go to college in New Orleans. I'm one of those people who love New Orleans. And New Orleans was transformative for me because what I gained in New Orleans was an understanding of my deeper heritage as a person of African descent. 
And so that's when I began to learn about the ancient kingdoms of West Africa. The people who you see in this picture are the Akan people. These are the people of modern day Ghana. Importantly, this is not a historical photograph. These are like people today, right? Aren't they fly? Don't you want to know them? Okay. <laughs> are they gorgeous? Right. <laughs> So the Akan people have a concept called Sankofa that was a symbol that you saw while I was singing the song. And Sankofa means go back and fetch it. Go back and fetch it. There's something that we all have in our past that we need to go back and fetch, something we need to go back and get. Now, sometimes when we return to the past, it may be a difficult experience. It may be rooted in challenge or hardship. Or sometimes it may be a pleasant something that we've kind of lost connection with. But Sankofa means to go back. So for me, as a college student, it was pretty much an intellectual understanding of Sankofa. And it was transformative in my understanding of self. But it was when Hurricane Katrina happened that Sankofa took on greater resonance for me. Here we see a mother in front of the Superdome, and we, many of us, witnessed this experience, felt this experience at home from our television sets. Some of us may have had direct experience with Hurricane Katrina, perhaps with loved ones who went through the storm. And of course, because I lived in New Orleans for a decade as a student and a grad student and started my career there, when I'm watching these events unfold on television and I'm talking to people on the telephone, these are my mentors and my professors and my college roommates and the people who live next door to me. And so Sankofa became, at that point, not just intellectual, but it became um, an inquiry. How do I remember the lessons of my childhood and make it so that the experiences of my brothers and sisters in New Orleans, we don't have to go through that anymore, okay? So, through many circumstances, far too many to describe in this evening's talk, a community-based organization called Sankofa Vision was born. And so Sankofa is represented there, as you see, the heart, Sankofa being the journey back to self, the journey back to heart, the journey of remembrance, and also the bird that moves forward but looks backward, the bird that takes time to remember its nest and to remember its young. And so since the organization was founded in 2004, we have been working with many people, some of you in this room, uh, people throughout the city of Shreveport, people throughout North Louisiana, connecting with people around the country, in fact, in this pursuit of how do we use art and culture as a tool for building communities. Well, what I soon learned were the lessons of my childhood were the foundation and values needed to help develop this work. So, this is what my people said. You need to put God at the first of your life. Now, I'm not here to proselytize or to make anybody believe anything that is not necessarily your original belief. But what I do know and what I have experienced to be true is that there is a universal source. There is a universal supply. And for my parents, it was their connection with the land. For Sankofa, our connection has been through literally planting seeds. That God connection has been investing and cultivating and planting literally seeds of change that have birthed growth in families, growth in people, and growth in community. Forsake not the family. There was a fig tree, very much like this one, in the yard of my mother's, mother's, and father's home. And so this fig tree was the place where we would gather, the place where we would tell stories, the place where the children would run around and play. And so at Sankofa, the fig tree has now become the Sankofa Gardens campus. But certainly we know that children are the foundation of family. We, many of us, inherit the lives that we have because someone invested in us, someone seeded in us when we were children. So certainly we must remember to turn back like the Sankofa bird, and to invest in the lives of children today. These are our, some of the Sankofa scholars who we work with every summer. Cultivate good character. Well, the way I heard this growing up was is 
you need to have some home training. If you know about home training, <laughs> raise your hand. Come on now. I know y'all know about home training. Okay. <laughs> home training means I've taught you at home. Now don't go outside and embarrass me. <laughs> but cultivate good character. And so those lessons in character really have been passed on intergenerationally. That is the beauty of the work that we do at Sankofa Gardens is we are building intergenerational connections. Um, there is a bit of a, you know, maybe generation gap sometimes. But what I have learned and what we have learned is that really the elders are concerned about the youth and they do want to invest in the youth and really the children are willing to sit and listen. It's about creating those opportunities for people to come together. Seek knowledge. This is another lesson. The cotton field there is a remembrance of my mother's experience. My mother, Mrs. Nanny Lewis, uh, is the daughter of sharecroppers, as I shared with you. And her ambition for her life was to move beyond the farm and to pursue education. She's a first generation college graduate from Grambling State University. However, the means by which she paid for college was she worked in a cotton field every summer picking cotton to earn her tuition. So how is it that we go from people that are so committed to becoming first generation college graduates to the mess that is like going on with our schools today and children that are feeling disconnected from school and really, you know, just don't think school is cool anymore? Well, what we do at Sankofa Gardens and how we're building community is we teach through the garden. We are making education experiential and hands-on. We're making it culturally relevant. We're making it rigorous. And so if there is a subject to be taught, I guarantee you, you can teach it in a garden. So if there's an opportunity in your communities to participate in community gardens or school gardens, thumbs up for that. I'm telling you, the kids will be all over it. And they will be the ones who are seeking knowledge energetically and passionately. Do your best work. Well, these are typical tools that I saw around my home, around the homes of my grandparents. And here's a young man that's involved with our Green Circles program. Um, certainly, we, many of us are hearing about green jobs and the opportunity, well, President Obama is talking about it right now, but green jobs is an opportunity for workforce development and job training. We are finding that urban agriculture and urban farming is an opportunity to put people who most need employment, who have had barriers to employment, to work. So we do have a vision of developing urban farms in partnership with other community partners throughout the city of Shreveport and throughout the nation. And celebrate life. So here we have gone from the seed all the way through the beautiful garden that is ready to harvest, full of, in this place, collard greens. Life is meant to be celebrated. You know, it's like we have to work, we have to learn, we have to invest in children. But you know what? At the end of the day or at the end of the week, you know, you need to put on your Mardi Gras hat mask, right? And enjoy, enjoy life. Life is to be celebrated with one another and in community. So my question for you is, what must you remember? What must you reclaim? What must you renew? Sankofa is West African cultural wisdom, but it's universal wisdom. And so I thank you for this opportunity to share with you. Please come visit us at Sankofa Gardens. There's room for everybody. Thank you. <laughs>